All right, so before we go any further, I just want to talk about the different options you've got for controllers here. So I started out using the Arduino. That's what we, you know, that's what we just watched, if, if you watched any of it. Because it was super cheap, I had them. These things are like, you know, they're three bucks, right? Super cheap, the MCP is really cheap. It's really simple, there's a lot of code for it. All that good stuff, right? Super simple to get your, uh, get your feet wet into this stuff. What I was finding is that this ended up not being fast enough for what I wanted to do. So using CAN bus or CAN hacker, it worked fine, right? I, the, the packets I got were in order, everything was cool. But if I actually use this to parse the data, like through the serial monitor or through functions, everything was out of order actually. So that means that this thing was not fast enough to read every message coming across the, the CAN bus in real time. So honestly, you can probably get by without that. It's not a huge problem. But when I was writing code, it was a problem for me because I had no idea what I was doing uh, in the beginning here and I didn't know what the results were. It also made kind of figuring out how the packets work a little challenging until I kind of, until it, until I figured that out, but I'll explain that in, in the next video, basically. So this is good. If you have these things, if you have one or the other, you know, use it, right? Use it to get started. It's enough to figure out what you want to do. What I ended up doing is I ended up playing with some other ones. So, so the other option is using one of these like newer, faster ones, basically. This is an ESP32, dirt cheap. It's got this little guy, it's got wireless, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, stuff like that. Super cool, you can do some pretty cool stuff with this in the long term. It's much faster than the Arduino. It's, you know, it's, you know, you can do like dual core stuff if you want to write the programming for it and stuff like that, and inner process, blah, blah, blah. This thing has CAN bus built into it, which is one of the main benefits of it. So you don't need to use the MCP anymore. You need to use this, which is called a CAN transceiver. These are dirt cheap as well. So you can buy like probably three of everything of these two for like, you know, I don't know, 10, 20 bucks or whatever, and plenty of stuff to get you going. This thing's a lot faster. So it's going to keep up with the stream of data you're getting. I actually didn't use this and I didn't get it to work. I tried once with one example code and it didn't work, and I was pushed for time to try and get something done for something else. So I said, one try is enough, and I went to the second device we have here. This is called a Teensy. This is a Teensy 4.0, and this thing is freaking awesome. More expensive uh, than all this stuff uh, probably put together now, right? So this thing can cost 30, 40 bucks, up, you know, plus or minus, right? It, you can get them for cheap if you really want. So this thing is a like an Arduino. You still use the same code, you use the same IDE, all that stuff. It's just this thing runs super fast, single core, blah, blah, blah. It's got a can, uh, you know, thing in it already. Can't even think of the word now. Um, it's got two of them actually. So it might even have three. I don't even know anymore. But basically, this thing can read CAN bus natively. You still need the transceiver. So this is what I ended up using because the first bit of code I ha I found worked perfectly. And I went down this path and everything's cool. So tons of options here. So you would use the transceiver. It plugs in. You power it through from the Teensy. And then you put two wires up into this thing. This thing, I'm using the FlexCAN library, which is super simple and it worked just straight out of the box and all of the packets I capture are in real time. So it's super fast. So again, use whatever you want. This thing, I bet I could get this thing to work if I spent more than like five minutes trying it. And I might because again, it's got wireless. So you got cool options here. You can get one of these with an SD card built in. So then you can do data logging straight to this. That's an idea. But basically, here's your main your main players that you're going to see. You're going to see an Arduino with the MCP, or you're going to see an ESP or a Teensy, uh, so, or something like one of these two guys with a CAN transceiver. 
but I also picked up an STM32. Those are super cheap, but that thing is way, way more advanced than I need, actually, it turns out. So I went with this, because this worked. This was by far the easiest thing to use. It took longer to set this thing up the first time than it did to, to do this thing the first time, right? And this thing didn't even work. So, well, it didn't work the first try. I know it will if I care about it. So I would say if you're serious, you go up to something bigger like one of these guys. These things are pretty dang cool. And it's pretty cool what like Arduino stuff has gotten to because I remember when this was like the business back in the day and now uh, these things just blow it out of the water for speed. Okay, so this is just a quick demo. I'm not going to plug this into anything. This is just kind of how you can start messing with the the same stuff in the previous videos, but with the Teensy and with FlexCan. So you want to grab the library from here. This is the same thing as before. Download this zip file and then import it into the IDE, basically. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you kind of what we're using I'm using basically the this, this first in, first out with interrupts example, and then I've kind of added some stuff to it that I was using for my initial testing here. So this is the same example. Again, initialization, super simple. This is for obviously your stuff. This one, I actually leave this turned off. Your baud rate, so this is the same as the previous uh, example with the other library. You want to set this to 500,000 because that's what you're running. Uh, that's what the Subaru CAN bus runs at. You leave this stuff alone. And these are some filter stuff that I'll get into in a second. And so what's happening is you're putting this stuff in the setup here. So what's really cool about the way this stuff works with the Teensy is that these are using interrupts. So you start this and this runs in the setup. And basically what's the saying is, is that every time you receive a packet, you run this function. And here's the default function right here is that every time you get a packet, you read it. So this mailbox overrun, stuff like that, this is related to data from the Teensy about, hey, are you filling up your buffer too fast? And stuff like that. I've never had this be a problem, so I you just ignore it. But then you got the normal stuff about here's your length. If it is it extended or not, again, you don't worry about that here. Timestamp is like how, when you got it compared to when it was running. Probably not the biggest thing for what we're doing here. ID and then buffer. Just like before, you've got a message dot buffer and this holds the eight bytes of data that you're gonna parse. And this is the core function that you will use when you're messing with stuff. So in here, you would do the same thing where you would do if you wanted to parse this data, you would do message dot ID if message dot ID equals right zero seven E zero or but whatever, right? And if you were looking for specific pieces of information in the buffer from one of the packets, you would use a loop and you can or you would know exactly where to go, basically. But this this does the exact same thing as the previous video was talking about when we're talking about like walking the data and printing the ID, printing the bytes within it and how to search for them. You're doing that in a function now instead of in the main loop. And this is where it's it's pretty cool. So when you're using this, as a warning here, when you're using this first in, first out, if you plug this into your car, turn off this stuff right here. Um, you also, you do not need can zero dot events. This is uh, unnecessary for any of the stuff we're gonna do, but make sure you turn this off because what this is doing is this is literally sending random packets out on the CAN bus. And uh, what I did was I left this on and I plugged it into the car and all of the dashboard lights came on, uh, the dang headlights turned on, um, it was absolutely freaking out the, the computer. The access port would not work. It would actually just do a blank screen and basically crash. So, um, yeah, this will definitely do really weird things in your car. If you turn this on and you plug this in, uh, you plug this in with your, with your uh, ignition turned on. So leave this turned off. You don't need to worry about it. You actually don't really need to do anything in the main loop here just for 
analyzing data. You really don't need to do anything in here. That This is back when you're actually trying to put stuff together and you want to do some action on can sniff and then you can put it into your loop and read variables. I don't, what, that's kind of what I do in the end, right? So all you care about is like, this is all I had to do. And you plug this in, you boom, you get instant data out of it. The, the serial monitor coming off the Teensy was packet for packet, exactly what it was supposed to be. For filtering, you can use this type of code right here. This is basically saying, this is from their actual documentation. So if you go over here and you search for filter, here's where you can see how to filter and stuff. So you do a reject all, which means drop everything. And then you only accept certain packets that you want. This one's a lot easier than the other library. You literally just feed it your byte basically, or whatever, two bytes, whatever this is. You don't even need to do a zero and a one. I mean, you can do, I think 16 filters or so, but you can start out with just, hey, I just want 78. Or you can just change that to, I just want to get 70, zero, push it. That's all you're going to get back. What I ended up doing was I actually added a second filter. So you increment this value here by one for every new filter you add. And you can just keep adding filters if you want. So what this code is going to do is this is literally just going to print the 7E8 and E0 bytes. Or sorry, IDs. So this is everything the access port is sending and what it's getting back. And it will be in perfect order, which, trust me, is a huge deal when you're trying to figure out what the heck you're looking at. So I would highly recommend, if you want to spend a little bit extra money, is to go with a Teensy and Flex Can. I believe there is a similar, there's probably something just like this for the ESP32. I don't know what it is, though. So maybe if I get bored, I'll mess around with it and make another video about how easy that one is. But this one is super legit. This is a this is a pretty cool library and matched with the, the power, you get exactly what you want. And it works, works great. I This is what I would do if I was gonna start from scratch again.